I recently got back from Hanover, Germany. And if you've ever wondered whether machining is alive and well, let me tell you, it's not just alive, it's thriving. Emo 2025 was a city of machines, an international crossroads where tens of thousands of people gathered, all fired up about the future of this trade. Everywhere you turned, there was something different. Massive five axis centers the size of houses, compact job shop machines, aisles of cutting tools, automation, work holding, entire worlds of possibility under one roof. What struck me wasn't just the technology, but the energy. People from every corner of the globe speaking different languages, but all here for the same reason, making things. So one of the craziest things about Emo is that this place is enormous. If you've been to IMTS, you know what a big show is like. This one's even bigger. From the machine builders all the way to the work holding, there's something for everything that goes into your machine. You can see Shunk, they have a massive booth here. Just about every kind of chuck, work holding, clamping you can think of. Come take a peek at this one with me. This one caught my eye. When you get into aerospace, it can be very difficult to figure out how to hold your parts, especially when you're doing high production. This kind of solution is fairly new to me. I've never used it, but you can see that this is actually a kind of quick change modular system where you can hold these really, really difficult to hold components in a really stable format. Because when you're doing aerospace stuff, you're taking so much of that material away, you have to have stability in that cut. Otherwise, it's gonna chatter all over the place. The other thing we keep seeing here is there used to be one dedicated area for automation. You know, there'd be machine builders, there'd be work holding, there'd be whatever. But here, you're seeing automation at every step of the game. From tool setup at a place like Hymer to Shunk, where we're talking about work holding, Everything has an automation solution now. And the cool part is, is that you can daisy chain them together or use a full system. So again, we're not spending time setting up fixturing. We're not spending up time, or spending time switching out jaws. Why spend your time as an experienced person doing this when there's just better things you can do? We're not talking about getting rid of jobs because right now we all need people. We're trying to figure out how to make do with what we have. And solutions like this may be a good fit. Now, one really cool thing about Emo as well is that you know a lot of the cutting tool manufacturers for the American shows, you'll see them in the booths of the machine tool builders a lot. So they'll say this machine is running this tooling. Here, for a booth like this with YG, they actually brought in a Grobe G150 just to run their own tools in here. These things are very, very common here. It's a bigger show. You're really getting that kind of premium level experience and you get to see tools like this run in the flesh. There's really no comparison to seeing tools actually making a cut. And the focus here on automation really can't be overstated. Yeah, we see some smaller machine tending robots. Yeah, we see some setups, but look at this. This is one of the biggest robots I've seen in my entire life. This may not be a good fit for your shop today, but there are people here from some of the biggest manufacturing companies in the world where they may see something like this and say, it's exactly what I've been looking for. But, I mean, come on, it's a car up on a robot. What's not to like? The thing is too, when we think about robots, what are we thinking about usually? Loading and unloading. The one thing we're seeing a lot here is utilizing robots throughout the manufacturing process. So in this case, I'm not exactly sure what this one's doing, but robots like this are doing inspection, they're doing painting, they're doing deburring. In some cases, they're actually mounting a milling spindle to these robots and using them for giant free machining. It really can't be overstated at this point just how important this is going to continue to get in this industry. So even if you're not familiar with it now, coming to a show like this and getting exposed to just what's possible can really help. Ooh. 
So Emo's hosted at a place called Hanover Mesa. And the Mesa is one of the craziest venues I think I've ever seen. It's huge. There are literally shuttle buses that run around this venue to get you from place to place. If you wanna walk from one hall to another, it can be upwards of a kilometer or even probably close to a mile to get where you need to go. So if you come, make sure you budget lots of time, wear some really comfortable shoes, and always pack a water. <laughs> one thing that you gotta come to Emo for is to check out the machines. A lot of the local German toolmakers really pull out the stops when it comes to the kind of equipment they bring. And this giant grow behind me is no question one of the biggest machines at the show. This one's really cool that you can see. It actually has that built-in kind of fourth axis trunnion and it has two independent five axis heads. You can see those things can move absolutely anywhere they want. This is one of the wildest machines I think I've ever seen in the flesh. This show is also full of incredible technology like this. The milling buildings really can't be overstated. Let's see if we can find some more. It's really helpful because everything you need to start a machine shop or outfit your machine shop is likely here at the show. Everything from air compressors, you know, the things that you may not think about as much, all the way up to the crazy five axis demos. It's really all here in one place and you can come evaluate multiple vendors, multiple equipment against each other and see what's gonna work best for your shop. And one thing that's absolutely crazy is that there's so many brands out there I've never even heard of. Like these guys here, this is a giant five axis machine in there I've never seen. And there are just so many different options out there that you may not have been exposed to. If you take a look around a show like this, a lot of times you gotta walk around for a little bit, but then you'll come across something that you go, I've been thinking about that for years and never come across, this is exactly what I need for my shop. one that I was actually looking forward to and that's Kern. These guys make some of the craziest five axis smells out there. They're very, very, very precise. And in North America, I'd say they're fairly rare. They're big over here, but it's nice when you come to this show because since they're German, they have a much larger presence than I've seen at other shows. And you get to see some of this crazy, crazy work getting done. Looks like they're doing some kind of topographical map almost here. It's running in this machine right behind me, the Kern Fortis HD. And these things are absolutely nuts. You can see that's actually live cutting right now. Again, most of the companies here are actually cutting chips. Um, a lot of shows out there, you may not have the opportunity because they gotta pay to put coolant in them, they gotta pay for whatever. Here, they're really trying to highlight what they're doing with these machines. And this one is an absolute beauty. Now, this is one that I just came across. I just got the rundown on this machine. This is one of the craziest five axis mills I've ever seen. It's got a 45,000 RPM spindle, HSK. But what makes the current Micro HD super, super interesting, usually these machines will have ball screws or boxways. This actually runs on a micro layer of oil. So you're getting really, really fast acceleration. They were saying it'll do two Gs in terms of acceleration, which is insane. But because it floats on that oil, it can reverse direction very quickly and very accurately. These are the kind of machines that they're doing carbide on. So they're doing like the presses, four carbide presses. They're doing the dies for those. Medical, you know, they're doing bone plates in half to a quarter of the time of someone else with crazy, crazy repeatability. I've been sitting here watching this thing run for about 10 minutes and I can't stop. It's absolutely insane. Take a look at this. For anyone who thinks manufacturing is a dying industry, they should have been here. The passion, the scale, the sheer creativity on display. This show was proof that machining has never been more alive and the future has never been brighter. This was Emo 2025. And if you care about where our industry is headed, it's a place you need to visit at least once.